Hi everyone, my name is Lindsay and today we are going to be going over how chromosomes synapse or line up during meiosis when there is a chromosomal aberration. Let's begin by explaining what chromosomal aberrations are. They are basically abnormalities or mutations found among chromosomes and they can have varying effects. There are a number of different kinds of aberrations, including deletions, duplications, and translocations. In this video, we are going to be doing an example involving inversions. When abnormalities within a chromosome occur, the fate of the offspring may be affected. Oftentimes, mutations are useless and non-functional, but on some occasions, they can be harmful. When homologous chromosomes line up during meiosis, their goal is to maximize pairing between like genes. Aberrations in one of the homologs can lead to strange adaptations such as compensation loops and inversion loops. If crossing over occurs during this stage, problems in gamete viability may arise. Having duplicate copies of genes along a chromosome or missing certain genes in a chromosome can lead to non-viable recombinant gametes, and I will demonstrate this in an example coming up. Okay, for our first example, we have a purple jellyfish with the two chromosomes listed here. Each letter represents a different gene on the chromosome, and the dot represents the centromere. As you can see, these two homologs don't match. The segments I have underlined are flipped versions of each other. One reads IJKL, while the other is LKJI. This is an example of an inversion mutation, and since the inverted segment contains the centromere, it is a pericentric inversion. To maximize pairing during meiosis, the chromosomes must find a way to get these sections to line up. In order to do this, an inversion loop is formed. The omega-shaped chromosome is the normal homolog, and the loop chromosome contains the inversion. Now, all of the genes line up properly. Let's say, however, that a crossover event takes place between the J and K regions. Because of the inversion loop, the resulting chromosomes will be different, and I am highlighting the new chromosomes in different colors. As you can see, the purple and pink chromosomes are identical to the starting sequence. However, the green chromosome has an extra G and H and is missing M. The orange chromosome has an extra M and is missing G and H. Thus, both of these jellyfish gametes would be non-viable, while the purple and pink gam gametes would be viable. Even though the pink still contains an inversion, it has all of the genetic information it needs to function properly. Now we're going to look at another scenario with a pink jellyfish. These are the chromosomes it possesses, and you can see that there are no mutations. When the homologs synapse during meiosis, no inversion loop is required and they can line up normally. If there were to be crossing over between regions J and K, the recombination event would result in the chromosomes being highlighted here. All four of the resulting chromosomes are identical in order, and this means that all four pink jellyfish gametes are viable. In comparing the outcomes of the two jellyfish's gametes, it can be seen that the pink jellyfish has twice as many viable gametes. This means that the pink jellyfish would be expected to have a higher fitness than the purple jellyfish because a larger portion of its offspring would survive to pass on its genes. Here's a list of my sources, and that concludes this video on chromosomal synapsing with aberrations. Thanks for watching!